Okay. Where is the speaker? I took a simple one beyond these speakers. Do you think this one is there? Faith Jiri is there. This is the Um, hello everyone. Hello, our speaker for today, Dr. Faith Njiriri. How are you? Hello? I can see our Vice President, Dr. Otara, who is in. Dr. can you hear me, even as the attendees are joining Yes, please, in? I hear you, I hear you. Thank you, our Vice President. I can see our speaker today, Faith Njiriri. I don't know if you can hear me, Faith. Hello. We can hear you, Dr. I'm just trying to get our speaker and also the moderator so that we can move on quickly. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. And welcome to today's uh, mental health webinar. I'll be the moderator, and my name is Faith Jiriri. I am a clinical officer. Yes, and uh, I hope you all, you're all welcome to today's webinar. Today's topic is self care among ourselves, uh, self care workers. You're welcome. Uh, we will start very soon. And before we start, I can recognize a few of us who are here, the representatives. And as we go on, you can all share suggestions for the topics you would wish and you have interest in, the ones you, should, you would wish us to continue discussing during this webinar. You can share them in the chat section. You're welcome to give suggestions at the same time. And as we go on, you can drop the questions in the question and answer section and the comments in the chat section. So please drop your questions. As the speaker will be speaking, you can drop your questions question and answer section and your comments in the chat section. Okay, it's also a reminder that we will have CPT to our CPT points for this webinar. They will, they will be sent for you on your email addresses. So once you log in and you register, the email address will be sent to you automatically. So a few acknowledgements. I can see a representative from KMA, that is Dr. Otara. Um, maybe even before the speaker starts, Dr. Tara, if you're able to, you can unmute yourself and say something. Dr. Tara, can you hear me? Yes, Faith, I um, can hear you. So, good evening, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, uh, continuation of our mental health series uh, in the program that we've had for the last uh, many months that we've had COVID around us. And I really want to appreciate the organizers for maintaining so, uh, so, this. Uh, uh, also representative from the Clinical Psychologist Association. Anyone can unmute themselves and say something. So I was still uh, on it. So I was just welcoming members on behalf of the Dr. Tara, are you ready? Hello? This is Dr. Otara, yes, uh, the Vice President of the Medical Association. I just I can see Dr. Ohas. Faith, are you listening or? Uh... Okay. If you have something to say, you can. Hello? Let me just read this as we wait for members to log in and group for order to settle down. <laughs> okay. So you're all welcome, even the other attendees from the other bodies, uh, still welcome to this webinar. Okay, also from the Kenya Psychiatric Association, we have Dr. Koba who wants to say something. So, sorry guys, we were running a few minutes late, but I think it will be fine. The most important thing is to remind ourselves that uh, Thank you. 
Hello. Ruth Maura, you are there? Yes, I am. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you and very well. So I think um, we apologize that we are late and I know many of us will know that this is not the first time we're talking about self-care, but like we know it's always good to keep talking about good things. So I think we'll give it back to Faith to continue introducing the speaker now that she's here. Okay. Once again, you're all welcome to today's webinar. Uh, the topic is on self-care on uh, among healthcare workers, Karibu Nisana, as we discuss about this interesting topic that affects almost all of us. So uh, you're almost all welcome, Karibu Nisana. So I'll go straight to introduce our speaker for the day. And our speaker today is uh, Ruth Maura. And uh, Ruth ha is a clinical psychologist with over 10 years um, experience in the field of psychology. She has, uh, she's passionate about mental health advocacy with a special interest in uh, adolescence and child mental health. So, Haribu Sana, Ruth Maura, you're welcome. Thank you so much. I think I'm trying to share my screen. Then for my end, uh, the host has disabled it. So I think I can be able to be hot on the same. Also my video. Yes, I noticed that too from my end. So kindly the host, you can enable us to be able to use the video and for the speaker to be able to share her screen. So please host. Uh, just give us a minute. We are waiting for the host to enable the speaker to share, to be able to share her screen with us. Uh, we will be working on that, uh, but Ruth, you can proceed as we await for that to be sorted. Okay, that's fine. So uh, as we start uh, talking about self-care, I think self-care has been done in the past, but it is important for us to do it again because it's important for us as healthcare providers to take care of our self-care. So as we start today's webinar, then we want to ask ourselves our questions. So a reflection question to all of us. I hope you can hear me, Faith. Am I, uh, am I audible? Uh, yes, Ruth, you're audible, very audible. Oh, okay. So as we start today's webinar, then we want to ask ourselves, uh, what does self-care mean for us as healthcare providers? because it is very important for us as healthcare providers to be able to take care of ourselves, to be able to take care of our self-care, because in the field that we are working on, we witness a lot, we hear a lot. So as we take care of other people, then we also have to take care of ourselves. In the pain and suffering of others might lead to emotional numbing, negative coping strategies, and even emotional breakdown. So it is important for us as healthcare workers to take additional attention to our own well-being in order to be able to be emotionally, physically, and able to help others. So the World Health Organization defines self-care as what people do for themselves to establish and maintain good health. So this includes our hygiene, our nutrition, so nutrition in terms of the type and quality of food that we eat. So our lifestyle, you know, are we physically active? Also leisure. It also includes self-medication. You know that sometimes as healthcare providers, we do a lot of self-medication. When I feel I'm not okay, I self-medicate. Then also we look at environmental factors, you know, where we are living, the living conditions and the social habits. So as we talk about self-care, there are some myths about self-care and also facts about self-care. So 
Self-care for fat. Ruth, could you kindly allow us to bother you a bit? We can't see your screen. Okay. Yes. Let me, see, let me go back. So, or has they cannot, she can, you cannot see her screen because the host has not enabled her to share the screen or even show the video. So we yeah. just continued in the interest of time, but it okay. would have to be the KMA host to enable her to share her screen and to show her video. It is not on her side. Oh, okay. Sorry, I wasn't aware of that. Yes, if, you, if we could, let me try to get to Sharon. Okay. All right, I think, uh, am I clear? I can, I can still go back. Yes, we can, we can hear you. Oh, okay. So we had, uh, I had started by explaining what uh, self-care means according to the World Health Organization, which defines self-care as what people do for themselves to establish and maintain good health. Because you know that in the, in the field that we work in as healthcare providers, you know, it's important for us to be able to take care of ourselves. So what do we do for ourselves to be able to maintain and establish good health? So when it comes to self-care, there are things that are included in self-care. So we talk about hygiene, so our personal and general hygiene. We talk about nutrition, so the type and quality of food that we take. Also the lifestyle, so the physical activity and leisure. Then self-medication. And you find that most of the time as healthcare providers, we do a lot of self-medication. So when I'm not feeling okay, you know, I will go and self-medicate. And also we look at environmental factors. So that includes our living conditions and also social habits. So when we talk about self-care again, there are myths and also facts about self-care. So for a fact is that self-care is a routine. So it is something that you need to incorporate in your day-to-day -day activities, something that you do on your daily basis as part of your routine. Also, self-care helps balance our mind, our body, and our spirit. Also, it involves letting go of old habits. Also, when it comes to healthcare, we also uh, are myths about it again. So self-care is not an emergency response. So self-care is not something you do as an emergency. Also, self-care is not being selfish. Because sometimes when we look about, uh, we talk about self-care and you know, taking about our, uh, taking care of, our, of ourselves, then there are people who think now, now this is being selfish. Yet it is not. Also, it is not increasing tasks. So self-care does not mean that you increase your to-do list. So there's something called the ABC of self-care. Some of the basic concepts. Eh? So there's awareness. So as a healthcare provider, you need to be aware of your needs. What are your needs? What are your limits? What are your emotions? And what are your resources? So this helps you to be able to look out for early signs of burnout, because you know that in our field of work, there's a lot of burnout because of the high numbers of probably patients that we're seeing, the workload is a lot. So burnout and compassion fatigue uh, is very common. Ruth? Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you can now you are now allowed to share your screen. Okay. So okay. let me go back to it. Huh? Okay. As she does that, you remember to ask to put your questions in the question and answer section so that we handle them at the end of Ruth's discussion. Thank you. So from your end, are you able to see it? Yes, Ruth. We can we can now see this the slide. Okay. And even also the the video, yes. Okay, all right. So I think uh I was talking about the ABCs of self-care. So when you talk about self-care, then there is the ABC of self-care, all the basic concepts of self-care. So we start with awareness. So as a healthcare provider, you have to be aware of your needs. What are your needs? What are your limits? What are your emotions? And what are the resources available for you? Also, this helps you to be able to look out for any signs of burnout, because you know that burnout is real as you know, the workload sometimes can be a lot. So burnout, compassion, fatigue, sometimes can affect us. So I always say it's important for us to develop a habit of checking in, you know, do we ask ourselves, how, how am I doing? Because most of the time we find that we ask other people how they're doing and how they're faring on, 
but most of the time we don't uh, check in on ourselves. So checking in on ourselves is important. Also balance, we have to develop a work, family and social life balance, which is key in terms of self-care. So each day you have to remind yourself that you deserve a meaningful and enjoyable life outside work. So sometimes we find that we rotate around our work. Everything uh, rotates around work. So we don't take time out to be able to remind ourselves that, you know, I deserve a meaningful and enjoyable life outside of this work. Also connection is very important. So we talk about connection in terms of establishing social networks. So ask yourself, do you have a social network? Do you have a support system? Do you have people that can be able to help you out? So you have to establish positive relations with co-workers, the people that you're working with, the friends, your friends and your family, because this at the end of the day helps you in terms of avoiding isolation. Because sometimes as you work, you can be isolated because there's no social network. Sometimes you don't have time to socialize. You know, you're always busy working and doing all that pertains to work. But you have to have a social life because this helps in terms of your social work, uh, social connectedness. So as we talk also about self-care, is what we call the wheel of self-care. So self-care is at the middle. Then you can see that we have what calls nutrition, we have exercise, we have stress mastery. How are your relationships? How are your finances? The work itself, do time to go out to play. Also your health care, how is your health? How is your environment? Is it a toxic environment? How do you have a life purpose? How is your self-esteem and also nutrition? So there are different forms of self-care. One of them is physical. So self-care is important. The physical self-care is very important. So are you active? You know, do you take time out to be active? You know, sometimes people say, ah, Ruth, uh, there's, there's no time for uh, working out. There's no time for going for, you know, walks and all. But when you talk about self-care, then being active is very important in terms of just taking care of your physical self. Also practice uh, he eating healthy. Most of the time you find that in a workplace and because of the nature of our work, and sometimes we get so busy, we are not able to eat healthy. So sometimes you do a lot of snacking and sometimes when somebody has not eaten the whole day, so they eat in the evening. So as we do for ourselves, then practicing healthy eating is very important. Then also watch out for regular sleep patterns. You know, what time do you sleep at night? You know, are you sleeping regularly? Do you have limited time for sleep? What can you do? Because taking care of your physical self-care is very important. Then also take time to rest, to relax, and even for short periods of time. Because people work and work and work. You know, there's no rest. When you tell people you need a break, they tell you, uh, uh, they, I don't have time, there's so much work. But also, I always ask people, you know, when you drop down and probably become sick, or even when it's too much and you have to take time off, what will happen? You know, your work will still continue. So you have to take time out for yourself because it is very important. Because when you're well, then you're able to take care of your patients very well. You also look out for emotional stroke or psychological self-care. So this incorporates talking to friends and loved ones. You know, do you have friends that you can talk to when you feel overwhelmed? Do you have people that can listen to you? You also look at coping, coping in the past, like how have you coped in the past? Because sometimes things can be overwhelming and you feel that uh, at this period of time, I can't cope well, but it's good to remind yourself how you've coped in the past, because how you've coped in the past will be able to help you gain skills that can use in the present to be able to take care of yourself. Also writing and journaling. So writing and journaling is very important. It helps you be able to, you know, bring out whatever is happening, whatever is inside of you. So when you write and journal, this also is, a, is very therapeutic. You also recognize your strengths and achievements because sometimes we find that as we work and sometimes we become burnt out and overwhelmed, we forget the strengths that we have. We forget the achievements that we've had in the past. So it's good for you to remind yourself of the strengths and the achievements that you've had in the past. Also learn a new skill, you know, if you want, it could be even a new language, you know, something that you can learn, a new skill. It doesn't have to be work, work, work. You can learn a new uh, skill that can help you. You also look at spiritual uh, self-care. So deeper meaning in life. What is the meaning of life? What is your understanding of life in itself? Eh? Do you find a, a meaning in life as you work? Is it just work? Or are you finding meaning in how you work? 
also reflect on your beliefs and your values. What are your values? Because I, I always see that when you have a belief system or a value system, it helps you in terms of your spirituality. Also, meditation is good. You can be able to meditate. This goes a long way in helping you. Also, get it out. Get it out of you. Talk it out. Get somebody that can listen to you. Also, in terms of your professional uh, self-care, get new knowledge in your field. Are there seminars that you can attend? Are there CMEs that you can attend? Are there sim uh, symposiums that you can attend that can help you in terms of gaining new knowledge? Also, you find that in terms of taking care of your professional uh, self-care, have clear roles and responsibilities. So ask yourself, in your workplace, do you have clear roles and responsibilities? Or does do, do your roles and responsibility overlap each other? Because when they overlap each other, then that can be a source of stress, that can be a source of burnout. Also, is, it, is there teamwork in your workplace? Do you have teamwork? Do you feel a sense of, uh, of team in your workplace? Also, it's important to take breaks and also stretch because most of the time we are working and we don't take time out to be able to take breaks. So also when you talk about self-care, we also look at social self-care. So we create support systems. So ask yourself, do you have a support system? It could be your friends, it could be your family members, it could be anyone that is within your support system. So do these people form a great support system for you that you can be able to connect with somebody that can hold you up when you feel low? Know? So having a social support system goes a long way. Then also, do you connect and feel a sense of belonging? You know, the people that you interact with, do you feel connected to them? Do you feel that you belong to them? Also, ask for help. Sometimes as human beings, or we find that it is hard for us to ask for help. So sometimes we find that people come for us for help. So us asking help from them then becomes very hard. So it's important for us to ask for help from our team members and also from our family. It goes a long way in taking care of our social self-care. Uh, also financially, in terms of financial self-care, ask yourself, how are your finances? You know, have you made investments? Do you have a retirement uh, uh, program? So you have to plan early to avoid panic because most of the time when that you work, uh, we forget to invest, uh, and some, sometimes this brings a lot of issues when it's, it's time for us to retire. So because we don't have something to fall back to. So as you look about, um, as you go through self-care, then ask yourself, how is your financial um, capacity? Do you need to see a financial coach? Do you need to see a financial advisor that can help you in terms of just addressing your finances? So these are some of the self-care activities that you can use. You can, you can see what can work for you. Not everything can work for you uh, from these self-care activities. Whatever can work for you can go a long way in helping you understand some of the things that you can do. So some of the healthcare activities that you can involve yourself in is writing in a journal. There are people who, when they write in a journal, it gives them a lot of uh, relief because they are not able to probably express their emotions to other people. So just writing it down helps a lot. Also volunteer for a cause that is meaningful for you. Sometimes this helps people a lot in terms of just taking care of themselves. Also making a gratitude list, you know, because as life goes on and things are happening and there are issues, we forget uh, to be grateful for the things that are working for us. So just having a gratitude list where you, you know, even write the things that you're grateful every day helps you identify that, you know what, as much as everything is happening and especially during times of COVID and all, then there are things to be grateful for. Also take a break meditate or listen to guided visualization if that is that works for you. Treat yourself to a nice meal. Ask yourself, what is the last time you took yourself out? You know, when is the last time you dressed up and went out, you know, for a nice meal? Then also take a nap, listen to music, try a new hobby. You know, have you tried a new hobby? Or is, uh, are you in the cycle of your old hobbies? Try something new. Also say no to extra responsibilities. Sometimes when in, in the workplace, there's a lot to do. Then people are also giving you extra responsibilities. So it's important for you to be able to, you know, say no to extra responsibilities. Also get a massage, you know. When was the last time you took a massage if massage is your thing, yeah? So if, if massage is your thing, take time out and go uh, to a massage. 
also buy yourself flowers. You know, if you love flowers, buy yourself flowers and just smell the flowers. Also turn off electronic devices. I know people will say, you know, I have this to do, I have a meeting, I have a class, I have this, all these things to do. But sometimes it's okay to take time off electronic devices because this helps you to be able to take care of yourself. Also watch a movie if movies are your thing. Also decrease stress in your life. Dance. What was, when was the last time you went out for dancing? So dancing is your thing again. So if dancing is your thing, also go out for dancing. It helps in terms of just releasing your stress and also addressing your self-care. Also wear something that makes you feel confident and something that makes you feel well. So why balance? Why balance our self-esteem? Because that is something that we'll ask ourselves. Yes. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I'm just wondering if there's anything you can do about There's a lot of background noise. Mm -hmm. Is there anything we can do about it? Okay, let me let me see what I can do. Okay, please, we'll appreciate. Okay. Hi, hi, Faith. Is the background uh, noise still there? Um, I think it's still there, but a little bit better. Okay. Just proceed. Uh, we appreciate. Okay. Sorry about that. So I was um, I was talking about why balance. You know. When we talk about self care, why are we balancing our self care? Why, why are we talking about the physical, the psychological, the financial, and all? So it's important because all this is linked, and hence a failure to take good care of one aspect does affect the other realms of your physical and your mental well being. So there are merits of self care. So when you take care of yourself, then you have energy, you have confidence and self-esteem, it helps you prevent mental health problems, it improves your relationships, it increases productivity and resilience to stresses. So it is important for us to take care of ourselves. It is important for us to be able to take time out, to be able to take care of ourselves, because the more we take care of ourselves, the more we have the energy to work, the more we have the confidence, the more we are able to prevent mental health problems, the more we are able to improve relationships and also our productivity at the workplace. So we talk about self-care and we have, you know, we have to look at these four key areas and all four key steps. So as you talk about self-care, you have to evaluate your coping skills. So far, how have you been coping? So increase your positive coping methods and reduce your negative coping methods. Step two, you identify your self-care needs. You know, what do you need? Is it sleep? Do you need to change your diet? Do you need to exercise? Do you need to take a break? or leave, so whatever works for you, you know, identify your needs. Then also know the barriers and areas of improvement. Where do you need to improve? Where do you need to do something about it? Then also in step four, create your self-care plan. What will, uh, that will address the needs and the barriers identified. So you've evaluated your coping skills, so you've increased your uh, positive coping methods and reduced negative coping methods, and then you've identified your self-care needs. Then also you've known the barriers and areas of improvement, and then you've also created a self-care plan. So this form will be able to help you be able to take care of yourself in terms of your self-care. So then this is something you can do for yourself. Huh? Look at the areas of self-care. We have physical, we have the emotional, we have spiritual, we have professional, we have social, we have financial. So ask yourself, which areas do you need to improve? You know, what are you doing currently in terms of your physical health? What are you doing in terms of your emotional self-care? What are you doing in terms of your spiritual self-care? What are you doing in terms of your professional uh, self-care? What are you doing in terms of your social uh, uh, self-care and also financial then see what you can try what can you add you know because you'll be able to evaluate and seeing that there are gaps there are things that you need to improve on so once you identify the gaps then you have to now start practicing something new that will be able to help you then we pose a, a question for ourselves how can we support each other as a team to deal with stress and challenge because remember we work in teams at, the, at our workplaces we're working as a team so it's a question that we need to ask ourselves, how can we support each other so that we can be able to deal with stress and also burnout. Then also as we conclude, there are things that we have to, uh, to remember. So you have to initiate self-care, you have to maintain self-care, 
and then you have to engage in routines that improves physical and mental health. So, how I, how are you? In, how you are is as important as what you. This is something that we need to remind ourselves. So, how you are is as important as what you do. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Ruth. That was uh, a very good discussion on self-care. We have learned something. As we take care of others, we should also be able to take care of ourselves. Asante Sana. And I'm sure everyone has a take-home message. Uh, yeah, there are very many activities we can do for to engage ourselves in self-care. And the steps you've told us, the four steps into uh, seeing how we're good at taking a, a, a taking care of ourselves as healthcare workers. So Asante Sana, I think uh, we have, we can continue sending in our questions. I see we are continuing to send in the questions. Please do. I read the first question for, from uh, Maurice Odoro. He asks, uh, what if my boss is my source of stress? So Ruth, I don't know what you can respond to that. What if my boss is my source of stress? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Maurice, for that question. Uh, I, I think maybe I still pose a question to you. Uh, have you talked to your boss? You know, have you had a sit down with your boss? You know, how is your boss? Is he the kind of person that you can have a talk with and have a discussion with? I think I, I, still, I pose the same question to you. If the boss is a kind of person that you can have a sit down with, could be a nice uh, approach where you have a sit down with your boss, probably address the things that you feel can be addressed by the boss. Probably it will go along in addressing the stressor. I don't know if that helps. Somebody else probably can share their views. But I think if the boss is somebody you can talk to, I think it will go along in just trying to have a sit down and address the things that are coming out. Okay, thank you so much, Ruth, for that response. Uh, and I think talking will resolve a lot of things. So the first step will be talking to, to this boss of yours or finding any other approach, maybe another uh, colleague also who can maybe approach your boss if you are not able to. But I think there's always a solution in talking. Yeah. Talking it out uh, and discussing and seeing what you can, you two can discuss the, the way forward. Yeah. So there is another question from um, Michael Karaoke Kamau. He asks, what's the best way to say no to your boss in regards to extra responsibilities? Uh, what is the best way to say no to your boss in regard to extra responsibilities? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I've talked about saying no to extra responsibilities. Uh, I think personally, I would say, say no, just explain to the boss uh, that, you know what, at this particular time, I have a lot. I'm not able to take in the extra work, but probably once I'm finished with what I have, I can be able to take the extra work. So I think explaining to the boss that at this particular time, you're overwhelmed, the work that you have, it's, uh, the time that you have and the work that you have is not uh, enough. But when you're finished with this work, then you can be able to take an extra work. So I think just being able to explain to the boss that at this particular time you don't have you know, enough time and what you have uh, on your plate is much, I think would go a long way. Okay. Um, thank you for that uh, answer. I hope Michael is satisfied. So uh, there's another question here. Okeo Bush asks, what if your line manager doesn't believe in your potential and capability? Mm -hmm. Okeo asks, uh, what if your line manager does not believe in your potential or cap and capability? Mm -hmm. So your line manager does not believe in your capabilities. Uh, I think for me, it will be important uh, for me to believe in myself. Because sometimes people don't see what you see in yourself. So if you know that what you do and the capabilities and the skills that you have, you know, uh, you know, are at par, I think for you start first start by understanding yourself and understanding that uh, you know you have the 
capabilities and the skills needed to work. So I still ask uh, probably maybe if uh, he can be able to answer us back, uh, has the line manager expressed that, uh, you know, I don't believe in your, in your skills and your capabilities. Eh? Because I always tell, say sometimes you're not in control of what other people think, eh? but in control of what we think about ourselves. So it goes back to ourselves, you know, as a person, do you believe in yourself? Do you believe that you have the capabilities to work? So I think it goes back to you understanding yourself and just doing what you can do best. But if the line manager has expressed that, you know, I don't believe in your skills, I've not seen your capabilities, I think it goes back to also having a sit down with the uh, line manager and, you know, just being uh, seeking clarification, you know, what are these skills that you, you feel I don't have, what are these abilities that you feel I don't have. And if true, then skills and the abilities are not there, you can always up your skills, you know, if it needs you going to an extra class for the skills, you know, if it needs you to do something extra for the skills, I think it can go a long way. I think it starts with yourself, with believe in yourself and have the skills and the abilities, but also uh, sit down with the line manager and ask which areas do you need, do you think I need to improve? And if, if you feel that these areas need improvement, then you can do something about it. You can gain a new skill, you can get something that can help you in terms of just improving your skills. I don't know if that answers your, your question. Uh, thank you so much, Shud, for that response. Um, we have more questions coming in. Uh, William asks, kindly comment on self-care for people living with disabilities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Self-care for people living with disabilities. Uh, it, it still goes back to the, uh, to the areas that you were talking about, the forms of, uh, of uh, forms of self-care, you know, the physical, the psychological, the emotional, and the uh, on the spiritual. So you go back to those uh, areas and see, pick out things that can work for you. Because remember I said not everything can work for everyone. So you pick out the things that you can do for yourself. You know, what are the things that you love? You know, what are the things that make you happy? What are the things that you know build up on yourself? So once you identify the things that make you happy, that can be part of your self-care. That, that can be part of the things that you do to help in terms of taking care of yourself. So identify the, the areas in terms of your, you know, the forms of self-care we talked about, and then you can start incorporating little by little the things that you can start doing for yourself as a person. So if, because you find that self-care works differently for each person, so it's as about us picking the things that work for us. So first, is identify the things that you love. What are the things that you love? What are the things that make you happy? Then that slowly becomes part of your self-care that you do for yourself, you know, on a routine basis. I don't know if that answers your question. You can still query, you still feel that it's not been answered well. Okay. Thank you so much for answering the questions. Uh, Okeo says the question is well answered. Michael says the question is well answered too. So, um, Kilunda asked, "What if my health is my reason? Is the reason for my for the stress?" Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What if your health is the reason for your stress? Then uh, I still go back to ask, "Have you sought?" Uh, uh, any attention, you know, is it, have you sought medical attention for your health, you know, if you've sought uh, your, uh, you've sought medical attention for your health, then I think it also becomes important for us to incorporate therapy and counseling in our, you know, our self-care, you know, because sometimes we find that there are things that probably we've tried talking out to people and sometimes we feel they're not hard you or they're not sent to you. So going for therapy or counseling goes a long way because in therapy then things are, are able to be addressed. So if health is part of your stressor, then look out, have you gone and sought for medical attention? If you've sought and it's still giving you, uh, it's also still a, a, a source of stressor. So it, it is important maybe to seek uh, counseling and therapy sessions for you to be able to address whatever is happening. Thank you so much, Ruth, for that. And I hope uh, Kilunda is well answered. And uh, I think during your discussion, you said, we as healthcare workers try all, always want to self-medicate. So it is also good that we also seek medication when we have to, and also therapy if we think we are 
having issues with our mental health. So thank you so much for that response. Sure. Um, an anonymous attendee asks, how do you deal with stressful clients without appearing rude? How do you deal with stressful clients without appearing rude? And I know that we find, you know, we find all, all kinds of people in our areas of work, you know, there are people that will be rude to you, there are people that will be very unkind. I think at the end of the day is to remember, to remember about yourself, to remember who you are, yeah? and to know that sometimes people come with their own issues that have nothing to do with you. So I think it's always to remind yourself that sometimes the things that people are bringing to you have nothing to do with you, but all to do with themselves. I, I, I know it's, it's, it's not as easy as it sounds, but I think every time you have to remind yourself that it's not about you, it's about them. So. Okay, thank you so much, Ruth, for that uh, comment. Uh, and I think we the questions are, there's one more question that uh, William Otino asks. Would you advise routine self-administered psychometric tests as part of self-care? Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it depends uh, with the purpose of the psychometric test. Yeah? What is the purpose for the psychometric test? Why do you want to do the psychometric test? It can be part of your self-care, but also ask yourself, what is the reason behind it? Why do you want to do it? So I think the reason behind why you want to do it will be will be able to guide you on do uh, on the uh, on the reasons as to why you need uh, it as, a, as part of your self care. But but it's good to do it uh, depending on what you want to you know what, what you want to check out. So it can be routine for you depending on the reasons and the you know the reasons why you want to do it. Okay, thank you so much for that. Uh, there's one more question Maurice asked. Uh, I think more of a comment. My coworkers are my source of unmet target triggering, a negative attitude for my immediate supervisors. I think he had asked the question, what if my boss is my source of strength and my stress story? And he continues to comment, my coworkers are my source of unmet target triggering a negative attitude from my immediate supervisors. I don't know if you have anything to comment on what he has added. Okay, okay. So the source of stress is from the workplace and it's from the co-workers and probably uh, the supervisor. Uh, probably uh, have they had a sit down, you know, you know when, when, when there are meetings, even if it's not, uh, maybe there's an immediate supervisor that has an issue, what, what about another supervisor? Have they talked to that supervisor and be able to address their issues? You know, have they had a sit down? I think that to me would be a starting point of, you know, are there areas where you can be able to address these issues? You know, probably ask, uh, maybe you can be able to answer us, are there places where you can be able to address these issues? If probably this, uh, the supervisor cannot be able to address such issues, apart from the supervisor, who else can be able to address issues at the workplace? Somebody that they can be able to sit down with and have a conversation. I think a conversation will help if people are in a place that they can have this kind of conversation. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if somebody else has a different uh, view and they can help. They can add something. Um, I think it makes sense uh, talking and finding someone, a colleague uh, in the field who can be able, he can approach and maybe he can use him as a link to talk to the rest of his workmates at work. But if there's anyone else with a comment on the same, you can unmute him, um, yourself or just your comment in the chat. There's yeah. so many comments on the chat section. Um, people are saying a very good presentation and kindly share the slides. And I think as uh, as always, this uh, discussion is usually uh, on the KMA uh, YouTube uh, page. You can always uh, revisit it and see the slides in the whole discussion on the YouTube page. Uh, this, uh, a question on the chat. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, Professor Valentino Lema say, uh, come, asked, what is the role of any of alcohol in all this? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if uh, the question is clear, but she asked, what is the role of, what is the role of any of alcohol in all this? Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, you find that most of most people uh, cope with stress and burnout through alcohol. So sometimes alcohol can be used as a coping mechanism by other by people, and some most of the time it becomes a negative coping strategies. So the role of uh, alcohol could be in terms of self medicating So somebody feels they are stressed, they are burnt out, and they want to you know cope through alcohol. So I think for me. Alcohol is a coping mechanism that people use, which most of the times are negative coping, uh, coping mechanism, stroke strategy. I don't know if that answers her question. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Ruth, for that response. I think the comments are many, they are coming in. Uh, another person, uh, Maureen Nandwa, asks How do you create boundaries to self care at work? How do you create boundaries to self-care at work? Mm -hmm. How do we create boundaries to self-care at work? Uh, let me see if I'm quoting it clear. I think uh, being able to develop boundaries at work is you being able to you know, express yourself. You know, If there's need to say no to extra work, then you, know, you have to be able to say no to extra work. You know, if you feel that there are things at the workplace that are not going well, you can be able to address them so that you know you don't uh, keep quiet and yet these things are affecting you. So for me, I think being able to create boundaries is from an, a perspective of where you're able to address yourself when you feel there are things that are not going on well. I don't know if that answers your question. So thank you so much. Um, for that response, Ruth. Uh, there are comments, more comments are coming in. Uh, Edwin says, wow, quite informative. It was a lesson for me. And thanks to Ruth and KMA. Edwin, in a, Edwin a PHO, I'm recovering from alcohol and substance use. So um, those people, you, Edwin pass his gratitude to you. Uh, someone else says, fantastic presentation. Thank you. Uh, someone asked for the notes. Mm. Someone asked, how do one get the CPD point for the Zoom uh, meetings? Maybe that one will be answered later uh, by Liz. Um, yes, and someone asked, share the slides. Very good presentation, very well done. Good presentation, have learned a lot. If, uh, great presentation. So people are benefiting from the discussion today excellent presentation Jules. timothy says that uh, there is a question here from a world let me just read the question okay. if you deny other responsibilities would mm -hmm. you be pointed as not flexible hence you might lose the job how mm -hmm. do you say no to in polite to a polite in a polite way Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And thank you so much for that, because most of the time we are told, you know, uh, you have to take on extra responsibilities and all. I think it goes back to communication, you know, then communicate to them, you know, talk to them and tell them that at this particular time, I'm not able to take on a new responsibility or new work. But once I finish this, then I'll be able to take it on. So I think it goes back to communication and how you communicate. So just communicating that, you know, you have a lot in your plate for now, but once you finish it, you can be able to take on. Because sometimes extra work can also be a source of stress because you have too much work, but very limited time. Okay. Uh, that one is calling. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ruth, for that. Mm. Asante Sana, there's uh, more questions coming in. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that this one of how do we say no to a polite in a polite way has been answered, and more comments are. Thank you so much for the for the uh, for the comments. Very inspiring. So I think the questions are over, and we have I have we tackled all the questions. And Dr. Oha says uh, the speedy points will be sent to the email address. 
you you used to register for the webinar. So uh, thank you so much, Ruth. And uh, oh, I invite you, Dr. Ohas, to say something. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Faith, for moderating for us today. Thank you so much, Ruth, for the for the very timely presentation. I think it's important for us to keep being reminded. Uh, we are all aware that in as much as COVID, um, the new cases have actually gone down. Uh, what, what is expected is, the, is that the next pandemic will be mental health. So self-care is very important. Uh, we need to be capacity build uh, to be able to take care of ourselves um, as we try and navigate uh, this, um, I would say this problem, because as, as we can see, it's, it's everywhere. We are struggling with one or another. Our resilience is not as it was uh, before. Uh, very sorry for the glitch that was there before. Uh, you've navigated it so well, so thank you for that. I just want to appreciate our participants as well for making time uh, to come and, and listen and also participate and ask questions. Um, I hope or I'm sure that uh, this is making a difference, of course, in our lives and in our mental health especially. So what I'd just like to report is that we will be taking a bit of a break. Uh, we will communicate once, we'll, once we will be able to, to have these sessions back. And uh, until then, uh, uh, please just stay tuned. We will communicate in, in the usual, um, in our usual routes that we usually communicate through. So I think before we finish, uh, we have Dr. Koba. I think Dr. Koba can say something before we, we close. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I know there was also Dr. Otara. I don't know whether he wanted to say something now that we have a minute, but um, I think we would really want to appreciate Faith and uh, Ruth for that really nice, nice discussions this evening. And I always think of self-care as that oxygen mask that we really must continue wearing. And I know, and I always say that I'm also a student of myself. As I tell people to practice self-care, I have to keep reminding myself that it's okay to be human. And uh, now that in healthcare, we are taught to continue giving, we must remind ourselves that we cannot give health when we don't have it. So every so often call yourself for a meeting and tell yourself that you need to be alive to be able to make sure the other patient is alive. So just put on your oxygen mask first, then you can be able to put other people's oxygen mask. So the same way we check, we continue checking on our physical health. Am I feeling pain? Have I checked my breast? Have I checked my, whatever is your cervix? You know, we, we always reminded, but unfortunately very few times are we reminded to check on our emotional well, emotional health. So keep checking, look at yourself in the mirror and ask that person, are they really okay? And remember there's always something you can do. And when you think you can't do because you're stretched, there's professional help available. Don't be afraid. Let's normalize seeking mental health care. Thank you very much. I don't know whether Dr. Otara, you have something? I, I can't see Dr. Otara. Oh, yeah, uh, I think okay. he left. Yes, yes, yes. I think then we are fine. So thank you guys. Have a lovely evening. Rest is part of your self care. Today, at least, we're able to rest early. All right, bye. Thank you. Okay, good night, everyone.